photograph of Einstein standing in front of a chalkboard explaining his theory of relativity is a famous one. Chalkboards were an indispensable tool in education for instructors to share their teachings and for students to demonstrate their understanding. If you are over 30 years of age, you will no longer see the familiar green boards of your youth hanging on classroom walls. And for anyone born before the 1960s, the black slate boards are missing as well. The chalkboard, for the most part, has been remediated by the dry erase board in today's classroom. Dry erase boards provide the same static writing surface as the chalkboard. However, erasable felt pens are preferable over chalk for the learning environment. Chalk dust is an allergen for some students and hazardous for computer hardware. Labor is also required to clean the chalkboard erasers. I remember cleaning chalkboard brushes and chamois as being part of the elementary school experience. Because of the introduction of computer technology into education, the dry erase board is now being remediated by the electronic whiteboard and projector screens. Teachers no longer need to rely on writing out notes in real time to deliver their lessons. Proxima projectors can be attached to computers to enable the presentation of lessons that have been prepared beforehand. Electronic whiteboards also provide teachers with a medium for more interactive lessons than the static chalkboard and dry erase board. Material can be presented in text, audio, and visual format. But before we completely dismiss the chalkboard and forget about them in storage rooms and garbage landfills, let us reflect on how hanging a piece of slate on a classroom wall revolutionized public education. In 17th century French Canada, schooling was limited and universal education did not exist. The Catholic Church offered formal schooling for young men who might enter into the priesthood, and they also provided elementary education in the areas of catechism, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Through the missionary efforts of Catholic sister orders, some girls living in rural areas had greater access to schooling. However, formal instruction for girls was almost non-existent, and most of their learning was taught in the home in the areas of homemaking. After the British conquest, education remained mostly a family effort and formal tutoring was available to only those who could afford it. Beginning in the early 19th century, the idea of mass schooling took hold in North America and abroad. The first publicly funded schools began in Upper Canada under the Grammar School Act of 1807 and by the 1840s, a model for public education was created. Leading school proponents argued that mass schooling could instill appropriate modes of thought and behavior into children. Even so, most parents began sending their children to public school because they supported the idea that their children would learn to read, write, and perform arithmetic. Job security could also be dependent on levels of education. Public school developed into a system where teachers were trained and students learned from standardized textbooks and curriculum. A standard classroom organization evolved as well, in which rows of students sat in desks looking at their teacher standing in front of a chalkboard. It is not surprising that the chalkboard was invented at the same time that the idea for mass schooling began. It is also not surprising that the chalkboard was invented in Scotland. During the Scottish Enlightenment in the 18th century, Scottish philosopher Adam Smith advocated for a universal education system. In order for an endeavor such as this to take root, however, students and teachers need access to learning materials. Students need reading and writing materials and teachers need instructional materials. As well, it is imperative that teachers and students both have access to materials that are relatively inexpensive and accessible. Public education is dependent on the introduction of affordable technology into classroom learning 
because for public education to exist, society must be able to fund it. Before the invention of the classroom chalkboard, teachers worked with students one-on-one. -on -one. Students had access to individual slate boards that they could use to practice their writing and number operations. Teachers were, were required to observe each student's work individually and give examples individually. Teachers had no resource to present class lessons and examples to a group of students, however. Paper and pen technology was still too expensive to purchase at this time. Let's find out more about slate boards. Science teacher Troy Boyd from North Peace Secondary School describes how slate was first used to write in the classroom. Well, chalkboards way back in the day started from slates. And in school, I wish I had an example of a real one, but in school they would have had a piece of slate, a naturally occurring stone like this, which splits in very thin layers. And it's smooth on the surface, they make pool tables out of it. And there's another type of slate called pencil slate. And pencil slate forms these long, thin, and naturally occurring, you find them in, in, in the ditch or on rock faces. Anyways, so you'd go along and you'd collect a bunch of pencils. They occur naturally yeah. like that. You can write your name on things. Anyways, like that. And so you can write your notes on there. Unfortunately, it's a one-shot deal. You can only write one page. And then you take a rosin bag, which this is this just piece of paper towel, but you take a rosin bag and you'd wipe it all off. Something like that. And you'd write another page of notes. Like that. And that's how notes used to be taken. In 1801, geography teacher James Pillins at the old high school in Edinburgh, Scotland, remedied this situation by hanging a large sized piece of slate on his classroom wall. This way he could present examples and lessons to a group of children at one time. The invention caught on and North Americans soon followed by mounting blackboards on their school walls as well. Slate was both accessible and inexpensive which supported this new innovation. Teachers could deliver single lessons to masses of children. The slate board was an essential piece of technology for classrooms until the 1960s when slate was replaced by the green board. The green chalkboard, which is a steel plate covered with a porcelain-based enamel, was an even more economical innovation to both produce and ship. The technology was inexpensive and easy to use for both the teacher and student. The chalkboard can still be seen hanging on some school walls. However, the individual slate board has long been absent from students' material supply lists. Even though paper was the reason for the demise of individual slate boards, students are now shifting from using paper to technological devices in order to write out text and practice their lessons. Devices such as computers, computer laptops, iPads and cell phones are similar in one sense to the slate board in that they have a surface to write out text. However, electronic mediums are far more interactive than slate as they connect to the internet and can store text. As technology comes with a price tag, educators continue to strive to keep costs down when integrating technology into the classroom. For example, students are using iPads in the modern classroom. And in India, students are using the Akash tablet as a cheaper alternative than the computer. Chromebooks are another option in reducing costs associated with the integration of educational technology into the learning environment. Is it necessary to keep a chalkboard around in this digital age of ours? Well, let's hear from science teacher Troy Boyd from North Peace Secondary School about what happens in a classroom when the power goes out. 
My name is Troy Boyd. I teach Chemistry 12 and Chemistry 11 at North Bay Secondary. And normally I use um, the internet and I have uh, Blackboard Collaborate, which is an online streaming, a live streaming uh, program, as well as it allows me to record my lessons. And I normally bring up PowerPoint. Um, you can see it on the screen there or on the screen here. This is a write-on tablet and um, there's my laptop to do attendance and stuff like that, so they're different screens. Um, however, it's an internet-based uh, program. When the internet, you know, is not working, you need to do something different. And when the internet doesn't work, you have to go back to the old days and use your chalkboards. So yesterday, the uh, internet was down and, and we couldn't get on to use our, our technology. So I had to go back to the chalkboard. And it's been a few years since I've used the chalkboard, and so to any great extent. And so I wasn't all that comfortable doing it. And I made some mistakes as I went. And uh, however, towards the end of the day, I, I was used to it again, and, and I could handle the chalkboard. Anyways, um, very useful. The chalkboard is, is perfect. Unfortunately, when you go from a class to another class, you have to erase the previous class's stuff, make all new stuff. Whereas on the uh, program's technology today, you don't have to do that. You can just sort of flip well, back and forth. I guess the chalkboard is very similar to anything else in that uh, you present information to the kids. They see uh, notes, and as you write, it slows you down for one thing, which is a good thing for the kids taking notes. Um, you can put examples down which are not complete, and so these things are not complete, and then you say, okay kids, how many sig figs have we got here? Leading zeros do not count. Remember to look at the kids when you're, uh, when you're doing this kind of thing. Don't talk to the board. Um, anyways, so... Good chalk is important, keeping a good chalk supply. Excuse me. Anyways, when you have uh, boards that move left and right, it's wise to number them so that if you, uh, I don't know, if you have your, your notes there in advance, then you can just flip back and forth. Sort of like a PowerPoint. The tricks. If you write on the chalkboard um, with a pencil, the students can't see that. But you're going to look pretty amazing when you can reproduce complicated structures. And it looks like uh, you just remembered it out of your head. But you didn't. It's there in pencil. The students can't see that. Okay, so kids, um, phenylalanine looks like this. And the benzene structure here looked pretty cool, didn't it? But I drew it right here in pencil just small. And they can't see that, but it looks cool. So the reason to move forward in technology and to use uh, technology today is that the chalkboard has some drawbacks in that you, in this case, only have four pages. Um, whereas on the internet, I can flip back, you know, a hundred pages and go back and forth and all my writing is still there. Um, I can have all the diagrams, I can have photographs on the technology today, whereas I couldn't on the chalkboard, I had to draw them. Um, you can record things for future viewing if you use uh, the internet and, and technology today, computers. Um, you can also live stream on the internet, which is a very useful thing to do. Um, yeah. It is important to recognize not only has technology changed in the classroom, but curriculum, educational direction, and classroom organization has transformed as well. Because of innovative technology, the organization of a classroom no longer needs to adhere to one in which students sit in rows of desks staring at a central classroom chalkboard. Today's classroom accommodates many learning styles and opportunities for personalized learning. Students are more mobile in their learning environment 
and are able to visually read their lessons off an electronic device, as well as follow along a lesson presented by a teacher at the front of the room. Teachers can construct far more dynamic lessons using electronic technology with the ability to integrate visual and audio clips into material. Today's classroom does not necessarily even need to exist in a brick and mortar environment because of the internet. In addition, education is becoming more globally available due to online programs. The chalkboard is too static to support such educational endeavors. Nevertheless, in case the power goes out, maybe keep one of these relics around. A chalkboard is a practical and inexpensive learning tool that does not need to be plugged in.